各位弟兄姐妹们，主里平安！欢迎大家回到神的跟前，让我们一起唱诗、赞美、敬拜我们的神。这时候，我们奉耶稣的名，聚会开始。今天是五旬节，也是称为圣灵降临、降临日，令我们想起早期的门徒。他们聚集在一起，同心地在马可楼祷告。这是在《使使徒行传》一章十四节有记住，圣灵大大地充满浇灌他们，上帝的美好应许实现了。让我们也期待圣灵再次充满恩膏我们，当圣灵大能运行。的时候，让我们能跟上圣灵同步，让我们去传讲福音。人心比先前更需要主，圣灵，请你来。这时候，我们宣告神的话，《约翰福音》十四章十五到二十一节。你们若爱我，就必遵守我的命令。我要求父，求父，父必另外赐给你们一位保卫使，叫他永远与你们同在，就是真理的圣灵，乃是人不能接受的，因为不见他，也不认识他，你们却认识他。因他与你们同在，也要在你们里面。我们再看一处《使徒行传》一章八节：当圣灵降临在你们身上，你们就必得长能力，并要在耶路撒冷、犹太城地和撒玛利亚，直到地极。做我的见证，这是神的话，阿门。我们同心祷告，亲爱的天父，我们感谢主。今天我们纪念主你五旬节圣灵降临日的日子，我们只有在灵里面呼求你阿爸父，让你圣灵带领我们，引导我们走一路。因为主，你圣灵充满浇灌我们的时候，我们才能发出那能力、勇敢去面对、去传讲你的福音。但也求主你帮助，给我们有这样的圣灵同在，里面心里充满着有喜乐、有平安。主，我们需要你，需要你圣灵带领我们。每一天的日日子如何，力量也如何的赏赐给我们，也是像你的聪明智慧的灵、磨练能力的灵，这是以敬畏耶和华的灵赏给我们，让我们靠着主必得胜。主们感谢主，这是我们为着你的仆人亮明光牧师，今天他所分享你的话，你恩高，你圣灵充满着他，传讲你的真理，让我们每个听的呃灵里面。的帮助的造就的激励，知道主你是何等何等的爱我们的神，主我们需要你同在。以下时间完成交托，圣灵来带领我们，感谢祷告来奉我耶稣基督的名求，阿门。弟兄姐妹，祝你平安，好不好？我们一起起立来敬拜我们的神，常常喜乐，我们以喜乐的心来敬拜。
感谢你，因为你坐着为王。无论是在高山或低谷，你就在我们的生命中。弟兄姐妹们，平安。这时预备好我们的心，还有饼跟杯，来感恩纪念主耶稣基督救赎的大爱。他舍身流血，为了要赦免我们的罪。
我们要正式悔改，改过自新，遵行神的道。哥林多前书十一章二十四到二十六节，神的话如此说：“我单是传给你们的，原是从主领受的，就是主耶稣被卖的那一页，拿起饼来，注谢的。”就掰开。耶稣说：“这是我的身体，为你们舍的，你们应当如此行，为的是纪念我。”饭后也照样拿起杯来，说：“这杯是用我的血所立的新约，你们每逢喝的时候。”要如此行，为了是纪念我。你们每逢吃这饼、喝这杯，是表明主的死，这等到他来。阿门。我们同心祷告，亲爱的天父们，感谢你，因为你要我们纪念你。你当初如何说，要喝你的、吃你的肉、喝你的血，就是表明主啊，我们要与你有亲密的关系，因为你在我们里面，我们也在你里面。主，我们感谢主，因为你的大爱，你舍身流血，就是要舍去我们的一切的过犯、一切的罪孽。主啊，你的爱。是何等长阔高深，我们说不尽你的爱，我们只有在心里，以诚实敬拜你，来纪念你对我们所付出的大爱。主啊，但愿求主你圣灵的充满，做我们每个人，让我们心灵完全的降服在你面前，领受你的大能，你的美德，你的大爱。我们感谢，我们把一切荣耀归给你，祷告来奉我耶稣基督的名求，阿门。May the peace of the Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for having me. Our topic this time. Is、uh, abstain from the food offered to idols. Pertaining to this issue,、uh, most Christians take the more pragmatic route. That is, according to First Timothy chapter four, that it is、uh, cleansed by prayers and the word of the Lord. Even、uh, at times when you go for makan makan or go for some Uh, supper or dinner, as people pray, they pray in the name of the Lord to cleanse the fruit. I think it's basically based on this uh, this uh, passage from First Timothy chapter four. Definitely, it is more a pragmatic approach rather than to become an offense to others, especially friends and relatives, and.、Uh, According to based on、uh, situation ethics, rather than based on the command by the apostles, not only Paul alone, but also based on the word of God. So I hope you will be interested. And let's rethink on this important issue. Because Paul concluded in First、uh, Corinthians. Chapter ten, verse twenty、uh, to twenty-three. Paul says, "But I say that this thing which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to the devils, not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with the devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of the devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table, and of the table of the devils." Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than Him? 
stronger than he. Verse 23, which is also, which should be also be read, but it is a quote from one of the letters that was sent to him inquiring into this issue. But the severity of this issue is very clear. We are not to consume the food offered to the idols because by doing so we have fellowship with the spirits, with the evil spirit, the devils. And above all, the provocation of the Lord to jealousy. God's love is a love of covenant. We are his covenanted people. So if we have fellowship with the demons through partaking food offered to idols, then the devil can provoke by accusation. And that accusation is also written in the scripture in Revelation chapter 12 verse 10 that he accuses us the brethren day and night. Why did he want to accuse us? So that he can test our faith. And we are covenanted by faith. So if we were to be tested and through trials we start to have doubt, then our uh, faith will definitely go through stormy time. So what is Paul's position on food offered to idols? Let's read Acts chapter 15 verse 28 to 30. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if you keep yourself, ye shall do well, fare ye well. Although the first church conference was an issue on the circumcisions of the Gentiles who were converted, remembering that most of the early converts were Jews or Gentiles converted to Judaism. So when Paul and Barnabas reached out to the Gentiles, some of the Jewish Christians who were formerly probably Jewish leaders insist that they should be circumcised. For this reason, Paul and Barnabas was there in the first apostolic council. When Paul and Barnabas came back in verse 2, said, told us that where therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dep deputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem upon unto the apostles and elders about this question. So after the, the, the council, the conclusion were recorded. First of all, it is said is good to the Holy Spirit. Then to us. The us means the apostles and the elders. Christian teaching and Practices are based on the apostolic teaching, and it is written in verse 29 that you abstain from meats offered to idols. Now, if we say that we are allowed to eat offered to idols, food offered to idols by prayers, definitely we are not following the teachings of the, the apostles, and we are not supposed to take blood. If we were to do so, then what about fornication? You see, these are some of the issues that we have to be sure that we are following what the apostles have already decided. Verse 30 says, So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch, where they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistles, which means this decision was widely taught in the churches. And it was a issue that has already been decided that Christians should not partake food offered to idols. So, what is Paul's explanation in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 all about? Does 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 to 3 condone eating food offered to idols? Because it can be cleansed by prayers? 
What does Paul mean by Romans chapter 14, verse 13 to 16? Where he talks about eating. That we should not be a stumbling block. Either to Jews or to the Gentiles. So, in verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 11, Paul says that if someone were to take food offered to idols and a weaker brother saw him eating and he ate, took the courage and ate, and his, verse 11 says that destroy your brethren. The severity of partaking food offered to idols can destroy a brethren. So let's begin. Begin with Paul's explanation in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. We must remember that Paul was answering the letter wrote by the Gnostic, who said some of them became Christians. And Gnostics are just like our present day descendants of Spiritists. They have some ability, some of these are very cunning abilities to communicate with the Spirit. The Gnostics, they claim that they are special people. They have psychic ability. Just like some of them with kinetic power. Who claim to have higher knowledge. So the quotes. With the signs of quotes, quotations. Are words that he quoted from these letters. Many versions, biblical versions or translation omitted the quoting sign. The confusion came in because what was said or words that have been used by these so-called Gnostics, Gnostic Christians, were used to make Paul admit or make Paul agree that you can partake food offered to idols. Be careful. Take for example verse 8, But meat commended us not to God, for neither if we eat are we better, Neither if we eat not, are we worse. And these words are not of Paul. These words are from the letter. Because it's quote. So Paul's stand is clear. Abstain from food offered to idols. With this stand, read over again 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and observe all those quotations. Those quotations that are not Paul's word. And Paul after he made the stand clear, he went into chapter 9, speaking about those people who serve in the temple of God. They ate food offered to the Lord. They offered, they consumed milk, meat from there, and only the Levites and also the priests, they were given special rights. Then he came back to chapter 10. He came back to this issue because of its importance. And that's where at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20 to 22. Because God is a God of covenant, His love is jealous, and the issue is a very serious matter. Because He says that, are we stronger than the Lord? If we provoke His jealousy. Provoke jealousy means, apart from me, you shall have no other God. So if every, anyone took food offered to idols, have partaken fellowship with the spirit means that he has other gods he has fellowship with them and satan can use this to accuse a christian so most people think that satan has no more rights over christians some of these teachings are not completely right because the people who claim that christ has already won the battle on the cross or even from Acts chapter 28, 26 verse 18 says turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. Therefore Satan has no more power over us. But that is not true because other scriptures enlighten us on this issue. For example, First John chapter 5 verse 19 For convenient we forgot that for convenient, eh? we want to take food off of the idols and thinking that Satan has already has no more authority over us. We forgot First John 5, 5, 5, 19. For we know that we are of God and the whole world lie in weakness. 
or in some translation says the whole world is in the power of evil the power of the weak, weak evil one and he accused us before God to receive power to test our faith that means he stand before God and say to God that we have fellowship with him and then ask to test us to provoke God's jealousy means that we have beside God another God for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accuses them before our God day and night we must remember that Satan will only be subdued completely on the return of Christ which means as the God of this age and also the principality of the air he still have authority over those people who rebels against God those that the scripture call as living in disobedience so Paul will never contradict the edict a decision made by the council the apostles and the elders so how do you explain first Timothy chapter 4 1 to 3 first of all note that these words are based in the same sequence as in Genesis chapter 9 we start off with marriage forbidding marriage whereas in Genesis chapter 9 speaks of multiplying and covering the earth then the Lord allowed man to consume meat any animals that moves on the earth you can eat their meat but not with the blood and not eating the blood is a covenant in Noah's time Noah and his descendant forever so forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meat which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused it is to be received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God that is during Noah's time God has says anything that moves on earth during those days there are no vehicles so there are animals birds fishes and because God has already allowed us to consume this meat and with Thanksgiving we can eat them so first Timothy chapter 4 is speaking about all those are created by God not food offered to idols so don't get the two issues confused or mixed up here and God bless Noah and his sons and say unto them be fruitful multiply and replenish the earth this is according to marriage this is about marriage and the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon the earth every beast of the earth upon every fowl of the air upon all that move upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea into your hands they are delivered every moving thing that lives shall be meat for you even as green herbs I given you all, all things but flesh with life thereof which is the blood thereof shall ye not eat so it's after the flood that Noah and his descendants are allowed to consume meat all animals but not with blood and this covenant is not most not a, from the Mosaic law it is from Noah so all men are clean are clean by the word from Noah, Noah's time so it is pre Mosaic and the Lord Jesus himself also says so that all food are clean now why the Jews do not consume pork because they were rebellious and they were sojourning in the wilderness for 40 years and during 40 years those animals that consume meat carnivorous they are not allowed to eat them why because then they will have pestilence properly today the coronavirus 19, uh, uh, 19 might have been caused because of eating blood you consume the blood of animals and then the virus will mutate in our body but no one has ever do an experiment on this so we are not sure 
So because we are allowed to consume all these meats, we can give thanks to God for allowing us to consume meat. So it is not dealing with food offered to idols, but abstains from meats, not abstain from food offered to idols. So please be clear. Next. When we think of Satan's accusation and his lies, Satan is a roaring lion finding ways to destroy faith. And we are covenanted by faith. We are saved by faith. So if we lose our faith, when we are tested by sufferings, by unanswered prayers, by hindrances, we may even lose, lose the very salvation that God has already promised us. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a rolling lion, walk about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You see, so Satan could only get permission from God with reason obtained by accusation. Because God changes not and He can accuse us to test our faith. So just in the case of Romans, where dietary habits become stumbling block and racial prejudice, which is detrimental to Christian love and faith, Satan used this, that some of these dietary habits when we talk about that the habit that is said that is mentioned in the book of Rome, when I'm in Rome, I behave that like the Roman does. But you cannot apply this word on the gospel. The gospel, you cannot change or you cannot allow anything to dilute the gospel. That's why in the book of Galatians, Paul says, you know, there's only one gospel. And if I were to just want to change it, or I allow the Christians to be circumcised, or force them to be circumcised, then I'm trying to please men, I'm not trying to please God. So many theologians, theological students, seminarians, they make this conclusion that you can take food offered to idols by giving thanks and prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus to cleanse the food. Well, if you were to hold to this position, then you are asking Paul to contradict the Apostolic Council. And the decision made for the, by the First Council. And it is of the Holy Spirit. And you can say even sinning against the Spirit of God and the truth. Now when you talk about uh, Acts chapter 15, I must add this point that people say it's of the law. It's not of the Mosaic law in the first place. Secondly, I must say is that when we want to have a good relationship of God, we must have also have a good relationship with things that were created by Him. Food offered to idols are having fellowship. If you take food offered to them, are having fellowship with the devils, the fallen angels. By taking food that are still with the blood, you have part fellowship or you have uh, what we call um, partaking the life of animals into our own life, in, into our human life, which is made in the image of God. And thirdly, if you have fornication, it's only fellowship of the physical fellowship. It is not a fellowship that is of the soul. Because we can only get satisfaction through the fellowship of the spirit and of the soul. So we are created so that we can have fellowship with God. So we have to be sure of what this teaching is all about. And also, it's important also for you to know how others make this decision about uh, partaking food offered to idols. Because those who came to see me, for example, there is a couple who were married for many years, for 14 years. They are Singaporean. And uh, they have no children. They have sperm count. They have a test, all kind of tests. They even consider considering step still baby. 
But the church is a conservative church, so they knew about my position and they also wanted them to come and see me. So they came and as I go through uh, the prayers, according to James chapter 5, I asked them to com do confession and ask them to be right with God. I discovered that they have been partaking food offered to idols all the past years. Added to this, her heart, the man was given to the gods in adoption when he was a young boy. He has never renounced these things, which means that he has never confessed the sins the parents did on his behalf. And by taking food offered to idols and is also partake in, uh, partake in some of the Chinese rituals, for example, Qingming, he were they were accused. What happened if they were to conceive and the child is being acute, uh, uh, the child uh, was open to satanic attack? They may have children born uh, with uh, defects. So all these years, the Lord didn't open up the womb. But after they came here, after the confession and after they changed their stand, thank God, within the year, they gave it, the wife conceived and gave birth to a son. They named him Isaac. So I hope through this uh, message that you are not so sure, you go through the passages that I have just read you know, and be sure this stand is not compromisable. Why? Because God changes not. And because Satan, the adversary, is always trying to find opportunity to accuse us and to test us. And many of the Christians today are under testing without knowing it. They make prayers that they found that God did not answer. It's a very sad thing. So I hope this message will be a blessing to you. If you find that you have no peace listening to this, I just want you to go listen over again. And I hope you will help. Help your spiritual life and help your faith. And help the church too. May God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Amen.